Good morning, Aletheia family. We are working our way in the Daily Five through the book of 1 John. And in his introduction, John says that he's writing this letter so that our joy may be complete. And what a wonderful meditation at a time like this. Our passage today is 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. Here's what it says. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So far, here's what John has told us. That joy comes through fellowship. Fellowship with God and God's people. And the number one threat that undermines that fellowship is sin. Now, it's no surprise then that in verse 1 of chapter 2, he says, I'm writing these things so that you may not sin. Rejecting sin is easier said than done. I, I know this, you know, I got started in ministry, in youth ministries, discipling teenagers. And it's pretty extraordinary to see how difficult it can be in your teenage years to reject sin. And the nature of it might change a little bit as you become an adult, but the intensity and the, the difficulty of rejecting sin really never changes. However, in my conversations with people, there has been one thought or one line of thinking, one paradigm, that has proven more helpful than any other when I've been talking to people about how we reject sin. And here it is. The more we fall in love with Jesus, the more we will fall out of love with our sin. It's proven so helpful, both in my own life and in the lives of people who have been helping reject sin. And that's precisely what John is saying here. So many times in this passage, he talks about knowing him, knowing Jesus. And it is that very thing that weakens sin's power and helps us reject it so that we can have fellowship and we can have joy. Now, how do we know Jesus? Three things. We need to know who he is, know what he's done, and know him. So first, know who he is. In verse 2, excuse me, in verse 1, it says, If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. We need to know who he is, that he is righteous, he is holy in his character. He is perfect, without flaw, and only ever has a posture of love towards God's people and towards the world. I mean, think of John 3.16. Then, secondly, we need to know what he's done. It says that he is the propitiation for our sins. This is a word you've probably used at any point in the past week. It's not a word in usual conversation, but here's what it means. It means that Jesus Christ has, has um, taken God's just wrath or his response against sin in our place. Now, these two things side by side, I think, can have a powerful impact on your heart. Jesus Christ is righteous, and yet he became your propitiation in your place for your sin. That a holy and righteous God would become your substitute really does a number on your heart, really endears the affections of your heart toward him. We need to know Jesus. We need to, we need to know who he is. We need to know what he's done. And third, we need to know him. In any relationship, it's not enough simply to know about a person. You need to have relationship with that person. If I know a lot of facts about my wife, but I never spend time growing in relationship with her, that's not much of a relationship. It's true of any re relationship. And in order to know Jesus, it means to know about him, know that he is righteous, know that he is the propitiation for your sins, but it's also to grow 
in your relationship, in your intimacy, in your fellowship with Christ himself. And this comes through reading the scriptures. This comes through prayer. This comes through walking in your life, in fellowship with Jesus. As you do, as you come to know Jesus more and more, your love for him will grow and your love for sin will weaken. You will have fellowship with him and with his people and you will find him to be such profound joy in your life. God bless you.